How's it going everyone? In my last video, I showed you all how to replace the front seats in a new generation Saab 9.3, specifically replacing my front seats, my current base model normal boring front seats with some anniversary front seats that I found at the junkyard. Of course, I also grabbed the back seats because those are slightly different. So today we're going to be replacing the back seats. And of course, I'm recording this intro right after I recorded the intro for the other video. So that's why nothing is in the car yet. But you'll probably see it cut to a point here where the front seats are done. And then all of a sudden we're just doing the back seats because of course that's the topic of today's video. So if you want to see how to remove and install the front seats and you missed that video, make sure to check out the video up here in this corner once you're done watching this one. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead, put the camera down, get started on working on the front seats, and then I'll catch up with you guys in this video when I'm ready to do the back. So first step in removing the back seats is going to be put them down of course. So go ahead Grab these on either side and jump in here. You can see I took the seats out and I must say, I don't know if I made this joke in the other video. Of course I will vacuum here soon, but this is a, uh, feels like it's equivalent to seeing like a Maybach or something like a Rolls Royce, infinite leg room. Um, enough messing around though. I probably just pushed the seat back into place. Actually I didn't. Thankfully. So with the seat down, if you come in here, it's going to be the same on the other side. If you come in here, you'll see down in this corner, there's a 13 millimeter nut. It's kind of hard to see down in there. But basically, this is going to be a pain for you to get out, to say the least. Uh, I struggled with it at the junkyard for sure, and I'm prepared to struggle with it again. Basically, how it's going to work is you're going to be able to rotate the wrench a tiny little bit, then you're going to have to flip it rotate it again. Uh, at the junkyard I wasn't able to rotate it again so I eventually just hit it with a flat head to uh, break it loose the rest of the way and that's how I got it out. But this is spring loaded so you're going to lose some pieces down in here so make sure you have a magnet to get them. With that said let's uh, let's struggle. So there's no real great angle for me to film this unfortunately. What I'm able to do is basically put it in one way, rotate it, flip it around, rotate it a little bit more, and then if I flip it back around, at that point I have enough to go back to the start and do another turn. So if you look on there, the nut is off. There's also a metal plate that comes right after the nut. I used a flathead and went ahead and pushed that off too, um, so that way now it should be able to slide out but you can kind of see the metal plate stuck down in there. That's why I said to have a magnet. But I think we might have to do the other side first. I don't remember which side we have to do first because these are also connected by a pin here in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side now. Another trick I figure I should mention that you can use that I, for some reason, did not think of before but just thought of now is if, I just got this side one out by the way, but if you rotate this, the screw will rotate too. So if you don't have that room, go ahead and just pull it up just a little bit and then you should have room and you can drop it back down again. So you can do it by yourself, but it might be easier with a second person. I did it by myself. But now we should be ready to pull these out. So you can see it's still stuck to the, oh no, never mind, it came off. Go ahead and pull that out. So you're not just going to be able to pull it straight out. If you look, I have a flathead wedge between kind of the rubber, I guess the rubber, I don't know, whatever you want to call that there. It's almost like a washer of sorts that's pressed against the frame. I put a flathead in between that and the frame to help kind of pry it off because, again, it's spring-loaded. I put another one on the other side right there, of course, as it just falls out. And then it came out very easily. So I'm going to do the same on this side as well. I got that one out. It's also connected to like a little frame, it's like a little something stuck in the middle here. So you just have to pull the pin out of that and then you're good. Of course, you're attached on the seatbelt here too. So I think while that's still attached, I will go ahead and 
grab these couple pieces out of here and then throw this in the trunk while I take the uh, bottom cushion out and I should be able to disconnect the seat belt. So to remove the back bench, there's just two little like, or I shouldn't say little, they're actually pretty big, metal clips. They're kind of like here and then same spot on the other side around that area. So pretty much the way to get that out is just to reach under there and just rip it out. I'm thinking maybe if I pull this bottom part out first, that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, again, I, that sounded like something broke, but I don't think it did. I'm literally standing in my car right now. This is a very weird feeling. Same thing on this side. Not gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna cover the camera. Plus maybe, so you can hear it. So it's right in between where I'm grabbing my hand. So I guess it's like, kind of like right here. Yeah, somehow that didn't break anything. I don't get it, but that's how it works. So to unhook the seatbelt here, we just have an 18 millimeter. I'm using a deep socket. Uh, that's why it's black and intact. Just put that back on there for now so we don't lose it. So my recommendation would definitely be wait to do these last. By these, I mean the two side panels right here. Um, I guess it was just a little bit of trial and error. You can see there's a bunch of metal clips here. This one is irrelevant if you've already taken everything else out. This one just kind of clips into the side right here. As long as you're gentle with it and you kind of wiggle it out. I mean, I broke a couple of clips on each side. Um, you'll be fine. It is also stapled once up here, like way in this back corner to the seatbelt holder. Uh, I just ripped that out. Not really a big deal. This isn't really a piece that's even going to be touched necessarily. The other one just has like a light gray stripe in it, so that's the only reason why I'm even taking it out. But the interior is now completely gutted. I shouldn't say completely gutted. All the seats are out. It's definitely a weird feeling, but as you can see, it's very filthy. So it is definitely time for a deep clean. And by deep clean, I mean vacuum. And then I'll be back. We can go ahead and start by installing. I'm going to do these side panels first. I'm just going to do it all in reverse order. Now do the same for the other side. Next up, I'm going to put the big side of the backrest in. That's mainly so I can get the seat belt uh, tied down again. And because this side needs to go in first. Since it came out last, it makes sense that it needs to go in first. Now before I do this though, I want to show you guys how exactly all of these pieces go in and what order they go in here. So you of course have your 13 millimeter nut on the end, that's what we were having problems with. Then there's the plate, then there's like a little like metal washer, and then there's this rubber piece, and then finally is the spring. So that's the order in which these things go on. Obviously I have to take this back off in, uh, in order to install it. Quick update on a little mistake I just made right there, and I noticed that because the seatbelt was all tangled up. So this actually needs to face, it needs to face downwards, and then there's a little hole where that pin can fit through, and these two pieces kind of fit in there together. So now I'm gonna tighten it down again now that I have it done right. I just wanted to tell you guys that because, I mean, I did it wrong when I recorded it. So now to tighten that down again and move on with the next step. So I. So I showed you guys the order in which these go on earlier. That's my next step now is figuring out how to fit all that in there in that uh, small of a space. So uh, that's gonna be hard to record, unfortunately, but you guys know the order. So I trust that uh, if I can do it, you can probably do it too. So this side is in, it's just a little finicky, but it's in. Now time to do the same for the smaller side. The heads up, it'll also probably be easier if you take these back out. So probably best to put the backrests in first, just because you get more visibility that way. Got them back in. Set them up. Should be just about good. Of course, you're going to want to move your seat belts all forward. Kind of get them in position for putting the cushion in. So I don't really know the trick to doing this. I've never done it before. I'm assuming just stick the uh, seat belts through the holes. 
and then find where the clips go. There you go. Those are the back seats replaced. So there you have it guys. That is how you replace the back seats. I guess also remove and reinstall the back seats on a 2000 three to 2011 or new generation Saab 9.3. If you have any questions or comments to help other people doing this, feel free to leave those down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you all next time.